Hi, and welcome back to Tech Your Game. And today we're going to talk about Google Forms, one of the most impressive apps in that Google Apps suite for any coach to use and the least understood. Hi, and welcome back. We're going to use Google Forms today to do some things in your coaching that I believe will make you a much more effective coach and free up a lot of time. Okay, Google Forms is, it's not even in the top three of the Google Drive apps that we're looking at so far, but it's going to be the first one I talk about because Google Forms is a spreadsheet generator. And you and I both know that we spend a lot of time on spreadsheets, usually spreadsheets that we've put together manually or had a coach do for us. All right, so Google Forms, like I said, it's not even in the top three. We're gonna look right here. I'm gonna to go to more and then there's Google Forms. All right, Google Forms is a way of collecting data in its most basic form. What kind of data do we need? Well, we never really know, so, but we know that we need a lot of it. Things like on our team roster, everything down to and including the date of birth of our players, their, their jersey number, where they live, what city, what zip code, um, what their email is, what their parents' email is, all of this information. And if you have to input it manually into a spreadsheet, that's painful. What you want is your players to input it. But typically, when you give it to them, they write it down on paper, and then somebody has to transpose it. Well, we need to get away from all of that. This is a paperless society, or at least it should be. All right, And this is one way to do it. If you create a form, let's say we have player information. And you just tell them, please fill out. Well, what's the first thing you want to know? What's your last name? Google Forms will automatically figure out that when you put in last name, they have to fill it out as a short answer response. There's a lot of different responses here you could, you could be asking for. You might ask for a paragraph, explain this to me. Multiple choice, pick from this list. Check boxes, pick all that apply. Drop down list, get a whole list of names and put them all in there. Linear scale, on a scale of one to five, how do you feel about this? Multiple choice grid, all right, dates and times. All of these things are things you might ask for. In other words, you start with last name, then you, and you make, click on another one, and you say first name, and again, it, picked your, it figured that would be a short answer response, and you click on required if you wanna make sure that they put it in. I didn't do that on last name, but I definitely want a last name and a first name required to, before this form can be submitted. Okay, then I'm going to put down something like date of birth. And what you'll see is Google Forms automatically says, you want a date? Sure. Give me a date response. Okay, and on down the line, address. And you want to make it street address so they don't put in the whole... Because some places, they're going to ask you to fill out a form, some tournament you go to, or something like that. Please fill out this form. And they're going to have a very strict way that they want to see that data. If you have that data all in different cells on a spreadsheet, then you can just configure your spreadsheet to be exactly what that, that tournament director wants. That's key to getting things done quickly. All right, so again, I put all these things in city short answer required okay cell phone short, short answer required zip code short answer required okay now what you notice here is these things are getting a little bit out of order first name date of birth doesn't seem to make sense. It's going to confuse people. That's fine. You can just click 
and drag last name up below first name. You can put street, city, and then move zip code up to below that. You know, maybe the cell phone you want to have underneath the last name, whatever you want. But when you're done, just click on this preview button and it'll show you this is the form that's going to go to your player. This is what they're going to be shown. Fill in your last name, fill in your first name, fill in a cell phone. That's the information that you're going to get. Okay. Now make sure you name the form. If I click in this cell up here, it's immediately going to pick this information. So if that's what you want it called, then you're good to go. It'll automatically fill for you. If you want to customize it a little bit, if you want to go up here and change the color because your team's color is green like mine, or if you want to pick a picture, they have a database of pictures. They're even animated a little bit. There's a basketball team, select that. And it'll put the basketball player up there shooting. And that's how it will be viewed. Again, I go to preview and this is the form as it will be shown to that player when he goes to fill it out or his parents, depending on who's filling it out. Okay, so that's you know just one way to get the information. Now, the thing is, we want to be able to do something with this information. All right, so first of all, to send it to them, you can email it, you can send them a link, you can shorten the link, you can get the HTML code and put it into your team's web page. You can send it on Google Plus, Facebook, or Twitter if you have a Twitter account that they all follow and you want to send them there. Okay, those are all different ways that you can send that information. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and send it in an email to myself and click on send. At the other end, on the phone, your player who doesn't have an iPhone 5 but your player will get an email from you you'll it'll have a nice little fill out form you click on the fill out and there it is they just fill it out and I'm just going to put letters in here real quick to done submit and it's done and the players and parents like that because there's nothing to fill out they just type it in select a date whatever you need so then when you get a response in this case response will show up right here I'm gonna click on it and I can see that pl player with first name M last name M uh, filled out the form and then I can take and create a spreadsheet from that form that looks just like this it'll say when it was filled out the, la the first name last name everything that I asked for that I required in that form will be right here. If I need to provide a roster to somebody with all this information, I'll have it here. If I need any of this information, I'll have it right here. I'll have it everywhere I go. Okay, so player information is a primary reason I use Google Forms. Another reason is to get players trained. One of my favorite things is just to take and embed a YouTube video, tell them to watch the video, then ask them questions. One question, two question, right underneath the video. Watch another video, ask some more questions, or give them a degree. How well did these players explain shooting? Not at all, very well. These are all things that we need to know. You wanna, sh you wanna get training into your kids in the off season? Fill, give them a, a Google quiz. All right, that's the way this one works out. Okay, we could also do statistics 
All right, I created this one to collect stats for lacrosse. Now, stats for lacrosse aren't all that complicated, but for some odd reason, they're still never very accurate. And I think the reason is there's only two guys at the table. One's trying to write down in the book and watch the game at the same time, and the other one is trying to spot statistics and still trying to watch the game at the same time. So what we did was we created a form. All right, here's a lacrosse statistics form. What game are you recording? First question. And then there's 27 different teams that we might be playing at any one time. They can just select from that list. Okay, what is the player's name that you're going to record the stat on? Here's all the players on your team. They may not have a stat at all in that game. It doesn't matter. You're just going to select one. This question is required as, as indicated by a red star. And this question is required as indicated by a red star. And everything else is just whether that player got that stat or not. A shot on goal, a goal, an assist, a ground ball, a turnover, caused a turnover. Got a save for your goalies, goals against for your goalies, face-off win, face-off loss. Only applies to a few people. All right, and penalties, different penalties they might have. Okay, and what that looks like, again, send it to their phone. Okay, and I sent this one earlier. Okay. Lacrosse stats. Fill out. Okay, what game are you recording? Click on the drop down arrow, scroll to the game you're looking for. What is the player's name? Scroll to the player's name and choose the stat that you want to record and submit. And that's it. That's all there is to it. And the reason I really like this for collecting statistics is you can get all of your parents in the stands involved. Yes, we know you need to keep a scorer's table. The score could get out of whack, and you need to have somebody at the scorer's table keeping an accurate score. But the statistics are different. All right? You can put a parent up in the stands and one on the phone. You could put two on the phone. You could put three. It doesn't matter. They can all be feeding into the same form information from that game, and their spotters can be everybody else in the stands. Now, started in your preseason with your preview games get a look at the statistics give some feedback to the parents and then all of a sudden you've got a crowd that is more concerned with how well your team is performing and how well their sons or daughters are doing than they are about how badly the refs are blowing the calls which we all know can really take away from the atmosphere of the game this builds family in your team this builds good information and it builds knowledge of the game, especially in our game, my game with lacrosse. Parents don't know much about it. All right? Anytime they see something that looks like a foul, it is a foul. All right? But when you start involving them using Google Forms to record your statistics, then they start to learn more about the game and have more productive conversations with each other, as well as you, the coach, as well as their sons and daughters. And from that perspective, not only do you get your statistics through their responses, but you get and you get it without having to look at a scribbled up, hard to read statistics book that was done so fast and hurriedly that the numbers aren't even close to accurate. Google Forms has you covered. You customize it to say exactly what you're looking for. You give the rights, the access rights to the people that you want to have access to it. They record your statistics and you have them immediately in a readable form after the game is over. So there's information, roster information. There's quizzing and training your players. There's statistics that you might need. And the last thing I, I always like to look at all right, and here's an uh, ex example of it. I did a, a leadership uh, and ethics seminar earlier this year, and I came up with a survey. You know, what was your favorite part of the survey? What would you recommend this to a colleague? What was your position? What is your name? 
Um, and I only made certain things, things that I had, that they had to fill out. They didn't have to fill out their name. Okay, you can make things anonymous and get some candid feedback that will help you do a better job as a coach. It's aggravating at times, I get it, but it could help. Your responses are all going to come back in graphical form. What is your position at the school? How likely are you to ask to return to this seminar next year? It looks like everybody's coming back. Um, how well did you like the format? Okay. All of that stuff. And then some open-ended questions, some short answer or paragraph answer like down here. Okay. All gives you a better idea how well you're doing and what your people, your players, your parents, your administration would like to see different or continue to be the same. So Google Forms, I'm going to get into into detail on how you do each one of these things. Uh, again, with all the other applications, when you create a new form, you can also go to a list of templates that are available out there and take a look at all the different templates that Google Suite has available for you. Okay, there are assessments down here. You might want to do an end of season assessment for a player and you can start with a template. Uh, event registration to get people registered to come help uh, do concessions to get registered to help come help train at a clinic. Uh, RSVPs, you name it. All right. And the contact information is essentially the player information form. So if you don't like creating your own, you can use any of these templates that Google provides and you can get the information you need quickly, efficiently, accurately, and without having to do a whole lot of data entry on your part. That's the big deal. You could send this stuff to the people that have the information you need. They can put it in. And it comes back to you in a format that you can manipulate in a sheet, which we'll talk about later. And get the information you need quickly so that you can spend more time working with your kids. I hope this helps. Stay tuned for more Google Forms videos coming up. We're going to show how to do this in detail in the next couple of videos. Thanks for your time. Have a great day.